You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about scapular winging. I had a question about scapular winging, and I thought, man, this is a really good topic, especially because at one point I had it severely, some severe scapular winging. If you've never seen this, this is when your scapula, your shoulder blades, they lie flat against your rib cage. And this is when the medial border of the scapula pops up off of the rib cage and it gives you this gargoyle looking back where these wings come growing out of what looks to be your rib cage and your spine and it is frightening. So we're going to exercise those demons and bring it back into flatness by first of all understanding what it is and then how we address it in multiple different ways not just what we stretch uh, and maybe foam roll, but also what we do for activation. But let me tell you a little bit about my story. I was uh, I was at a gym, this was years ago when I first started training, and at one point, it was just the, the trainer's room, and I was at my locker, I took my shirt off to throw it in, grab another shirt, put it on, and one of the guys behind me was like, whoa, Rick! And I was like, yeah, right, that's, that's a man's back right there. And he was like, no, no, you just did like the weirdest thing with your scapula. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I don't know, put your arms out. I put them up and he goes, put your arms down. And he was like, whoa, and I was curious. And then he started calling in other people to come and look at it. Yo, look at Rick's scapula when he puts his arms up and then puts them back down. I put them up, I put them down and everybody goes, whoa, like a Friday moment. Wow. What's up, big worm? So I had somebody video it and showed it to me. And I was like, whoa, I couldn't believe it. My, my scapula went up. And then when they came down, they just smacked into each other. And then I realized when I go into a push-up position, I go into pretty significant scapular winging. And let me tell you something. Push-ups and dips, those were my thing. I push-uped and I dipped and I dipped and I push-uped and push-uped and dipped and I would crush them. And yet, through doing those exercises, it definitely led to some serious and significant imbalance where certain muscles would not even activate and certain other muscles were over-activated and hyper-aware of what was going on. So scapular winging is when the medial border of the scapula comes up off of the rib cage. Now, here's something that I recently learned, that there are two different types of scapular winging. There is a medial winging and lateral winging, but that does not mean that the medial border pops up in medial winging and the lateral border pops up in lateral winging. That's, that's not how it works. In fact, medial winging, which is the most common, it's when the medial border pops up and then the scapula retract or they, they move towards the midline of the body. Lateral winging, on the other hand, is when the scapula pops up, but the shoulders protract, the scapula protract, and they move away from the midline of the body. But it's still the medial border of the scapula that comes up. Well, let's talk about medial winging for a moment. Medial winging is the most common. And it's when it, uh, the medial border of the scapula pops up off of the rib cage and it moves medially. It moves towards the midline of the body. Generally, it occurs if you just went arm straight up into flexion, then you would see the winging take place in flexion. And one of the ways that you could kind of really see this is when you do push ups, like push ups against a wall, you could do push ups on the floor. Either way, you'll notice that there's, uh, there's winging that takes place. And this particular winging, the medial winging, is a weakness in the serratus anterior muscle. And so when you look at the serratus anterior, it could also be damage to the thoracic nerve, which is the nerve that innervates the serratus anterior. But if that's the case, uh, that's not for me. That's a, that's physical therapy and treatment and things like that. So you need to refer that out. How do you know if it's nerve or not? 
And the answer is, I don't know. Um, but I would just say, if you're working with somebody and the, the scapular winging is not getting better, then it is time to refer them out if certain strategies don't work. Like what, Rick? Like what I'm about to tell you. So let's go into it and let's talk about, first of all, the, the serratus anterior. Let's identify what that muscle does. That muscle is a protractor. And clearly, if it's a protractor and you're medial winging, you do this the winging and it moves medially, then it's not protracting. It's the scapula is kind of adducting on the posterior side, not abducting. Uh, and the reason why we identify this as being weak is not just that there's kind of a retraction that takes place in medial winging, but it's also that the serratus anterior lines the uh, underside of the scapula on the medial border. And its job is to stabilize the scapula against the rib cage. That's what it does in its function. It stabilizes so other muscles can move the scapula the way the scapula is supposed to move. It also has concentric functions, which is it can protract the scapula and it can upward rotate the scapula. So the question is, and I see a lot of people that have scapular winging and they have protracted shoulder girdles. Does that mean that the serratus anterior is overactive? I'm gonna submit to you that it does not. And so we need to identify some other muscles that might be protracting the shoulder girdle and stealing from the ability of the serratus anterior to do its job. One of these muscles is the pec minor. The pec minor. Now, the pec minor is a protractor. It can protract the scapula, but here's, here's the process in which it reciprocally inhibits the serratus anterior, is that the, the pec minor is a downward rotator of the scapula. The serratus anterior is an upward rotator of the scapula. So one of the ways to bypass pec minor is to go into upward rotation, so take the elbows higher than the, the shoulder and practice protraction, protraction exercises. A lot of times I might just have somebody go into a scaption position, arms up overhead scaption, depress the scapula in that position, and have them practice protraction and retraction. And that protraction exercise, you really start to feel the serratus anterior working. You may not if you have severely weak serratus anterior muscles or some nervy potential nerve issues inhibiting that. Um, or you might not feel it just because they work so well that uh, this is just a normal movement for you. Um, but this is a really great exercise to practice activation of the serratus anterior. One of the other things you can do is uh, wall angels. I like the wall angels, hands up against the wall, slide them up and down. This is also very good for the, uh, for the lateral winging, which we'll get to in just a moment. Another uh, muscle or muscles <clears throat> that are antagonist to the serratus anterior, <clears throat> excuse me, this could be the rhomboids because the rhomboids do the opposite of the serratus anterior in two different joint actions. The rhomboids are retractors, the serratus anterior is protractor. The rhomboids are downward rotators of the scapula, just like the pec minor. The serratus anterior is an upward rotator of the scapula. So you might wanna go into and foam roll and stretch the rhomboids and the pec minor, just to make sure, just to ensure that you're getting both. And that would be something that'd be very helpful to fight against the, the antagonist of the serratus anterior muscle and help to mitigate some of the, the winging that takes place. <clears throat> Excuse me, what kind of winging? The medial winging. All right, well then let's talk about lateral winging because and we're looking at lateral winging. This is, it's like the same, but different. The same, but different. We've got lateral winging. It's the winging 
the medial border of the scapula comes up and moves away from the spine, moves laterally on the posterior side of the body. This one often occurs in shoulder abduction. So take the arms out to the side and start to raise overhead and you go into shoulder abduction and the winging takes place and moves laterally. This indicates weakness in the traps as opposed to weakness in the serratus anterior. And they could also be, that weakness could be caused by damage to the accessory nerve, but that accessory nerve, again, if it's nerve damage, moving on, send them to somebody else. This is not for us as, as personal trainers. And then we look at the antagonist muscles, the ones where, well, if my arms go up overhead, right, then, and I get this winging, this lateral winging where it moves laterally as it wings and protracts, then the muscles that need to be activated or strengthened would be the traps, not just the upper traps, the medial, medial and lower trap, the traps as a unit to stabilize the scapula, to keep the medial border of the scapula down while protraction takes place or to limit protraction in the scapula from taking place. So to flatten the, the wings of the scapula and then allow for retraction. So as you go up overhead into abduction, then this starts to show up a little bit more because the, um, the scapula are more likely to move laterally in that position. What's the some opposing muscles to to the the traps, and that would be the pec major and the pec minor. So the pec major and the pec minor, the upper traps and the lower traps, they assist. Right. So this is interesting. They assist both of them in upward rotation, along with the serratus anterior. They assist in upward rotation. Well, the pec major, the um, Levator scapula, those are downward rotators. The rhomboids are downward rotators. Even the lats are considered downward rotators of the scapula. So if you really want to address some of the opposing muscles here, then you've got to look at the, the serratus anterior to strengthen it, the, the, the traps to strengthen them, and then maybe do releases on the levator scapula, the pec minor, and the rhomboids, and even the lats and the pecs, as they both can assist with protraction, and the lats assist also with downward rotation. Oh my goodness, there's so much information here. Is this what we're really going into? Well, yeah, yeah, but if you, you think about upward rotation and downward rotation, all you need to do is the opposite of that. So the muscles that upward rotate the scapula upper traps, lower traps, and serratus anterior, we need to strengthen those. And I don't mean strengthen upper traps and shrugging. In fact, shrugging is one of the best ways that our body compensates to bypass upward rotation. I can't get my arm all the way up with upward rotation, so I bring my arm up and then I shrug, and then suddenly it looks like I've gotten more range of motion. So not to strengthen upper traps by elevating the scapula, but through the practice of upward rotation, both through flexion and abduction, strengthening the serratus anterior, strengthening the lower traps, and doing releases and stretches to the levator scapula, the pec major, pec minor, lats, and rhomboids. All right. Man, we went deep on that one today with the muscles. Could be very confusing. Um, but I'm glad you're here, glad you're listening, and I hope that you found it helpful. If you got questions for me, do what this person did. Shoot me a DM and ask me a question. I'll be happy to cover it for you. You can hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie, or you can email me at rick.ritchie at naism.org. Uh, like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. Thank you for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.